With me is former Indian High Commissioner to Pakistan Ajay Bisaria. His book Anger Management is out, which basically talks about India-Pakistani relationship. And he was the last Indian High Commissioner uh, to Pakistan. It all happened because of uh, uh, the revocation of the special status for the erstwhile state of Jammu and Kashmir. But so coming to the point, your book is out. Uh, it details a lot of anecdotes. Uh, some of it we have read. One thing I would like to talk about is your tenure towards its um, end point. We saw India removing the special status and then you being asked to leave Islamabad. If you can talk about that particular time of your tenure in Pakistan. Well, I think that was uh, perhaps the most interesting part of my uh, tenure was my exit. Uh, uh, from Pakistan because uh, it came somewhat abruptly. Uh, I had done just about 20 months at, at that point in Pakistan and uh, with India's decisions on Article 370 and the decisions by our parliament, uh, this created consternation in Pakistan and I was asked to leave. Mm -hmm. So I had a 72 hour notice period and on the 5th of August, I was called in by the Pakistani Foreign Secretary for a demarche about uh, what India had done and uh, is expressing a great deal of concern. Mm -hmm. And of course, my response was that uh, this was internal to India. Pakistan had no local standi in the situation. But after a point of time, Pakistan seemed to be running out of options on what uh, it could do to express its anger mm -hmm. about what India had done and therefore uh, the position it took was to uh, ask the Indian High Commissioner to leave mm -hmm. and I therefore left Pakistan uh, somewhat abruptly in three days. Mm -hmm. Pulwama in February 2019, how close India-Pakistan were at war or something that was very dangerous for the region? I won't say war, but we were certainly at a stage where the crisis could have escalated um, beyond what it went. Fortunately, it de-escalated and we did not have any ugly situation uh, in, at that point of time. But uh, there was a, a distinct probability that uh, in, in India would escalate the situation if uh, Pakistan had not returned the captured Indian pilot or if he had come to harm, uh, that was certainly a point uh, which was clearly made by India at that mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. So since 2014, India has had a consistent policy towards Pakistan, one that links cross-border terrorism. Do you think that this policy is the policy that should be or there should be some opening when it comes to talks as well? I think India is always open for peace and for talks and so was the case even after 2014 because you need to remember that 2014 and 15 Prime Minister Modi met Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif five times uh, the first time being even at the inauguration uh, and the swearing-in of Prime Minister Modi uh, when uh, Nawaz Sharif came and uh, multiple meetings in the middle until Prime Minister Modi himself went to uh, Pakistan in the end of 2015 so the deal breaker which prevented this diplomacy from flowering. We had agreed at that point to have re a, a resumed dialogue. We were calling it a comprehensive dialogue, was terrorism. Mm. And I think that is the lesson that at least Pakistan must draw, that we come close to an uh, agreement to take forward matters, to do constructive diplomacy. India's leaders always take that initiative. Mm. But terrorism is a deal breaker. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it was exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. uh, that 2016 was a terrible year mm -hmm. in terms of uh, uh, terrorism, and that's why this, this relationship uh, uh, got frozen. Mm -hmm. If I can ask you to crystal gaze when it comes to India-Pakistani relationship, uh, do you think that there will be a time when there will be a normalization in the relationship? I think I would look at it with cautious optimism. And if I was advising the government of Pakistan or the government of India, right now I'm advising neither. Uh, I would say that Pakistan's best bet for its own interest mm -hmm. is to try to normalize as a country. Mm -hmm. And what would normalize mean? Normalize would mean that uh, reduce the hold of its 
army in the economy to normalize the economy with economic reform because that is the biggest danger to Pakistan that it might just crumble mm -hmm. as a state. Uh, it would, should normalize in the sense of not using terrorism as a weapon uh, of uh, state policy because this is what has uh, made Pakistan's international reputation terrible and had many economic implications for it. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, India would be happy to engage with a normalizing mm -hmm. Pakistan. And on India's side, India needs the strategic patience and the calibration to be able to deal with Pakistan's uh, terrorism with force, but also have the flexibility to engage and understand Pakistan, particularly when it becomes hopefully more coherent uh, mm -hmm. as a policy unit after uh, the Pakistan elections. Mm -hmm. uh, so my final question to you is, uh, any anecdote you would like to share with our viewers, uh, uh, something that is a story that touched you, moved you in Pakistan? Well, there are multiple stories and many of them find mention in my book. And th these are not just my stories, but those of many of my predecessors. And I think uh, what is very heartwarming in Pakistan is that despite the hostility, it can melt away in the evening over music. Mm -hmm. And uh, over. Uh, so I hosted at my residence in Pakistan several times, uh, several evenings of music. And when our uh, people, our cultural artists uh, from India didn't get permission, I would invite uh, some singers from Lahore mm. who were as good uh, and as familiar with the same music, the songs of Lata Mangeshkar or Kishore Kumar, and they would sing them. So I think uh, that's what gives us hope in this relationship, that there is a lot of latent goodwill also in the relationship apart from the ill will. Thank you so much, sir, for speaking to Vion. And this is a book that is much sought after. I can talk, uh, tell you about this, and I've gone through some of the chapters. Thank you so much, sir, for Thank speaking you. to Vion. Thank you, Siddhan. Great book. With video journalist Sanjeet Siddhan Sibul for Vion in New Delhi.